All right, our cultural hegemony segment. This phrase, cultural hegemony, was coined by the Italian Marxist Antonio Gramsci. Yes, that Antonio Gramsci, who wrote the prison notebooks. In the prison notebooks, this document that was translated from Italian to English by none other than Mayor Pete Buttigieg's father, Joseph Buttigieg, in these prison notebooks, Gramsci explores the idea of communist or Marxist revolutions and which were successful, which were not successful, and why the ones that were successful were successful. And he, his conclusion is that the Marxist revolutions that were successful were successful because first, the communist revolutionaries captured the culture. They captured what he called the civil institutions which is the culture, education, the family, et cetera, et cetera, instead of focusing on first toppling a governmental institution. Gramsci's premise was that once the culture was captured, once the civil institutions were captured, then the government would fall as well. Now, if this sounds familiar, because this is what we're seeing in our country, then yes, you're correct. That's an accurate, an accurate observation from you. This is exactly what we are seeing in this country. And that is why Perhaps you've heard of Ballerina Farm. Ballerina Farm is an extremely famous social media account. She has 17 million followers online. That's on Instagram and on TikTok, on the various platforms. They combined 17 million. Now, Ballerina Farm, uh, I confess, this is not an influencer that I followed until, until she became very famous for this clip. She competed in what's called the Mrs. America pageant. Now, Ballerina Farm is a married mother. I believe she's around my age. She's 34 or 35. She has eight children and she lives on a farm. That's the basis of her social media accounts is showing the life running this farm, homesteading. She has a business that emanates from this farm. But 12 days after she gave birth to her eighth child, she competed in a beauty pageant. And in this beauty pageant, she was asked what makes her feel most empowered as a woman. And her answer was something that when I heard it, I cheered for her. This is what she said. Take a listen. When have you felt the most empowered? I have felt this feeling seven times now as I bring these sacred souls to the earth after I hold that newborn baby in my arms. The feeling of motherhood and bringing them to the earth is the most empowering feeling I have ever felt. And if that doesn't give you chills, if that doesn't warm your heart, well, then you might be one of those childless cat ladies that J.D. Vance describes. It was beautiful. Not Think of how many women don't say anything about how empowering motherhood is, how wonderful it is to have a baby. So I became familiar with Ballerina Farm through this video. I think we talked about it here on the show. Well, recently, fast forward to last week, Ballerina Farm invited a journalist or allowed a journalist to come and write a profile on her, on their family, on their farm, on her status as a quote unquote trad wife. Now, when I say her quote unquote status as a trad wife, the mainstream media like to portray Ballerina Farm as a trad wife. I don't know that she necessarily identifies with that label, but this article shows you exactly what Antonio Gramsci was talking about. When you have an influencer as powerful as Ballerina Farm, who is honoring and celebrating the things that matter most, family, marriage, motherhood, nurturing children, uh, shepherding souls, well, the communists and the Marxists freak out. This is one of the nastiest articles that I've ever read. I actually didn't much care about Ballerina Farm. That's not really the type of influencer that I personally like to follow until this article. And now I am all about her. I want to give you a couple of examples of the blatant bigotry against this woman in the article. I'm going to bring this article up. Read you a couple of lines. So this is from the Times. The article is titled, Meet the Queen of the Trad Wives and Her Eight Children. The subtitle says, Hannah Nealman, known to her 9 million followers as Ballerina Farm, milks cows, gives birth without pain relief, and breastfeeds at beauty pageants. Is this an empowering new model of womanhood or a hammer blow for feminism? I would argue that it's good to be a hammer blow for feminism, but of course, this writer is a radical feminist. Here are some of the examples of things said about Ballerina Farm, these digs against her. Nealman, she writes, is the most well-known trad wife, despite having never attached herself to the movement or even used the term. How does she feel about it? We were, we, were, we were already together doing what we were doing, Daniel, her husband, replies instead. And then trad wife came along. We can't help it. This is what we are. If we're trad dad, trad wife, so be it. 
So what is that? What is that? She is portraying, this writer is portraying the husband of this household intentionally, trying to make him seem, because she wants her readers to suffer from perception is reality. She's trying to make it seem like the husband is answering, interrupting his wife, speaking for her, meaning being domineering. She's portraying him like that on purpose. There's no indication that he's like that. Then, then the article goes on to quote Neilman saying, our first few years of marriage were really hard. We sacrificed a lot, Neilman says, but we did have this vision, this dream, and Daniel interrupts, we still do. What kind of sacrifices, I ask her. Neilman responds, well, I gave up dance, which was hard. You give up a piece of yourself. And Daniel gave up his career ambitions. Then the writer notes, I look out at the vastness and don't really agree. Daniel wanted to live in the great Western wilds, so they did. He wanted to farm, so they did. He likes date nights once a week, so they go. They have a babysitter on those evenings. He didn't want nannies in the house, so there aren't any. The only space earmarked to be Neilman's own a small barn she wanted to convert into a ballet studio, ended up becoming the kid's schoolroom. Of all the nerve to try to comment on these people's marriage, the ins and outs, when they are so generous as to give her time. Again, the key word here, cultural hegemony. The Marxist left cannot stand if a man and a woman are happily married. If they are fulfilling traditional gender roles, the woman is having babies, the husband is providing and running a business, if they're homeschooling their children, if they are happy, happy. This writer goes on to portray Daniel as being a mansplainer. The writer goes on to say, I'm just trying to get a moment alone with Neilman, but a husband and a kid constantly interrupting, I never get a chance. The writer says, I wanted to ask her about birth control. We were surrounded by so many of her children, and Daniel is back in the room now too. Do you, I pause and look at her fixedly, plan pregnancies? No, Daniel said. When he says no, Neilman responds gently, it's very much a matter of prayer for me, etc., etc. What an absolutely nasty article. I read this very late at night, a couple of nights ago, and you can just tell that feminism is a pernicious fraud that hates women by the fact that when women choose to be feminine, like Hannah Neilman, choose to be wives, choose to be mothers, and actually like it, feminist heads explode. Again, I never really cared about Ballerina Farm one way or the other before this. I know there was a lot of controversy. Is it empowering or is it unhealthy to compete in beauty pageants 12 days postpartum? And I kind of always thought, blah, blah, who cares really? If she wants to do it, okay. Her husband comes from a wealthy family. That was another fake controversy. So what? It just felt like very boring controversy about her to me. But now I am all about this woman because some bitter, agenda-driven, man-hating, disrespectful, derogatory feminist deliberately, falsely portrayed Hannah as unhappy falsely portrayed her marriage as unequal, falsely portrayed her children as annoying, falsely portrayed her life as unfulfilled, her life as fake, because Hannah's life is family. And there is nothing feminists hate more than family. In case you ever forget, feminists were never about choice for women. Nobody will more viciously gut a happily married mother who's happy with those choices than a feminist who thinks nobody should be allowed to be fulfilled by doing what God created women to do.